Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy Net the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Thronebreaker: The Witcher Tales. We're still in the swampy marshlands of Angren, and we're well. We're uh, we've encountered a lot of monsters already, and that doesn't seem to be the end of it. Because right over here is an Arcaspor in what seems to be an abandoned Nilfgaardian camp. So let's check out this puzzle. Abandoned outpost. One week. All it took for the Nilf Guardians to wrest Angren from Temeria. The Blacklads quickly learned, however, that they mustn't rest on their laurels. Their true enemies were not the Nordlings who had supposedly ruled the land, but the beasts who dwelled within. It is they who taught the Nilf Guardians early on that it's best not to venture too deeply into the swamps. Eliminate all Archaspores without letting any allies die. So in Grand usually Archaspores are good at just dealing damage from afar, even when they're dying. But in Gwent it's random, so I'm wondering how that will work they're on our side. Every turn on turn end, if this unit's power is even, move one row toward the opponent and damage the lowest unit on the battlefield by one. Boost the unit by ten and then the fire will just damage it by two. So I'm supposing I should start with uh, the one over here. One bolt all I need. And then I can damage one of them by one. Then I can damage one by Give three. So they're both even now. So moving up, I suppose. There we go. So now we have three over here. Abolista, your command. Like that. And ant. And there we go. And they're still damaging my one unit. So yeah, okay. Let's try that again. So that means I should probably start this off with one arbalest over here. Maria! With five. So then they will move up. Then. I have five again. One bolt all I need. I move that up. Then five again. Give me a time. And that's three that three damage I'm gonna get. There we go. So they only damage my Arblast when they're even empowered. So there we go. And the third. He's going down. And then I can use my last. Arbalest to actually just kill the Archaspores. So that's gonna do one damage and one damage, and then we can just kill it off. There we go. That was pretty easy to start with. But I'm recording this on the morning, so I might as well start with something uh, something rather simple. So there we go. An Nordling. Ooh, it's Nilfgaardian. An Nordlingen von Kloa. Quickly, Veloe at East Nordling. Calm, Nordling. Oh, so it's oh, so it's a translation. Away, be gone, the fort. And so there's the the phonetic. Uh, that's actually cool. So it's a phonetic uh, pronunciation of each English sentence. There behind me, a cam and me, no passage, nese a feet. Okay, okay, that's cool. A bit of uh, Nilf Guardian lessons. I'm just gonna check the map because it's been a week since I've played this. I don't really know where we've been and where we haven't been. So there's still a battle on the east that I should probably do first. And then there's like screaming rocks over there and another bridge over there. But first through the swamp. And we have more vampires. Okay, yeah, I remembered this. So just a monster battle. But a bunch of vampires. The broken bridge, the bridge connecting the two banks of the backwater, had rotted through, forcing the Lyrians to circumvent it. The Katakan who prowled the area knew well of the bridge connect condition, and for this reason hit just off the beaten path. Crouching in the thicket, it waited patiently, licking its fangs in anticipation. So this is a standard battle, so we'll be here for a while, and it seems to be a Katakan with a beard. Blood drink Katakan, whenever a vampire is played, boost it by two. Simple. Simple as that. And actually, I'm just gonna take the time to talk about um, what Eve is doing in Angren in the right. books. 
Because I feel like that might be interesting to talk about. Uh, I'm just gonna play the, another drummer. And then the turn. So, after the Mahakam, we're going to Angren in this game to actually go for um, for Caldwell, for Count Caldwell in uh, that Tusla, Tusla Fort, I think it's called. On two copies of this unit, every turn on turn start, drain a random enemy by one. Okay, so that's the plume, but they just added that in, uh, in Gwent as well with the Crimson Curse update. Then I'm gonna play the Wagenberg. And put the regiment drummer next to it, along with the again, Grey Rider on the again, other side. Again. But, and the Book's Meave is already there. Oh, we, we lose our unit there, but I think... Can we actually damage that to get that back? Probably not. So in the Book's, they're in Angren for a while, and they're actually attacking the Nilf Guardians in uh, guerrilla-style attacks. Which they use to just cripple the Nilf Guardians as much as they can. But uh, the interesting part over there is that they've been there for a while. But the book also, books also describe the event, uh, well, the army of Meath as being consisting of multiple felons, dwarves, and just a ransacked group of soldiers. Because Meath just took what she wanted. Uh, which is actually pretty correct in regards to uh, this game as well. They match that pretty oh, nicely. Lydia! Um, let's do this, because of course this is exactly what we're doing in the game. We're just trying to get by while uh, the Nilf Gardens are close at our heels. But another thing that's interesting about um, Angren is that it's really close to the Nilf Guardian border. There we go. So this should allow it, oh god for fuck's sake. I hate that ability. Don't you hate that ability? I hate that ability. Um, let's just use Alzu Stunder to equalize that a bit. There we go. And and the turn we're actually losing. That is ridiculous. So he passed, of course. So let's just use the Northern Wind card to equalize that further. Should have done that first. But the most interesting part about me being in Angren is that she actually tries to get uh, as much damage in as possible. So she switches between the left and the right bank of the Yaruga, so the river that's running through Angren, which is why it's marshland. But uh, instead of that, we're just here to hunt Count Caldwell. So I'm really curious as to how they're gonna continue this storyline. Uh, I don't have... Yeah, okay, so let's just go with the slingers and pass. Strategic pass. So we can get as many cards as the vampire has. Because I have more cards in my deck anyway. So there we go, we lost the round. But as intended. And then we can move forward with... Ooh, that is interesting. And his hand is full, so they're tossing cards away. They don't use the new feature so Grand actually changed that tactic from uh, the base uh, alpha game so now if you have you, you pull more cards in your hand can contain you just get extra redraws instead of just tossing away those cards a much better solution of course uh, the Kadakan drains my units every time but let's start with the drummer Mommy's wasted time for me and then get that's actually fine they can lands connect and rain it that is fine. Is that always the lowest enemy unit? Yeah. So that's gonna become a problem. But spawn tree infantry, light infantry over there. And then use me Warhammer to put something up top. Might as well go. The Leon Harshtook is really good. And then the War Wagon up top. Allowing me to play the war wagon right here. Kind of and the Lyrian Hashtag like between. Hmm. The slinger again? The slinger and the drummer? Yeah, the slinger and the drummer. Not going into the spray already, are we? Um, and that should be it for now. So the Katakans will start damaging the light infantry units normally because they're going for the lowest units. So I don't actually have any uses of damaging them just yet. So let's see what happens. 
Oh, it is multiple, actually. So that is really good, because that just kills off all my light infantry units without me having to do anything for it. And there we go. And that kills off most of the Katakans as well. And I get six charges on my energy. Okay, I'm glad he didn't just get the energy there. That would have been bad. And those just all died. Okay, so there goes the energy. Whenever an ally is destroyed. Fair enough. Fair enough. Let's see. If I go for the 8 and then the 7, we get those up to 6s. If I then move the guard game, the Gloomer, then the Katakan over, I can do this. Then use my Rivian Onager to damage the Drummer and the Guard game twice. That is good, because now I can actually use the Sapper to it's just gonna be a right kill good levy, big and beautiful. all of them. There we go. There we go. There we go. And there we go. And now I'm forced to actually damage one of my own units, but the armor will catch that. There we go. Easy does it. So of course the abundance of monsters have all has all have also been uh, mentioned in the books. Because Geralt was hesitant to even go this route at the first place. Um, so there we go. We took a bit of damage because they took the onager. But let's spawn two trinkets. We got... Ooh, that's good. I think that we can actually choose... We can actually choose a damage unit to destroy. And we change it into a bear. There we go. 22 bear. And then... Boom! All units by one damaged. Which is not good. But yeah. Anyhow... Look at that bear. Seize a damaged enemy. Stop it. I'm gonna have to start consuming a few things here. So if I just use this. If the ring won't come out, just and get my two finger. units over here, the bear. So just to reduce the amount they can steal with another Garkane if he has one. Alpha Garkane if enhanced, so it's boosted every time an enemy takes damage. That's 41 already. But we also have Isabel. It's not too late to So there walk we go. Away. And next turn I can actually do 85 damage. So that's going to kill everything. And that's draining again. So that just gives me more things to destroy. So uh, Isbel Destroyer for the first time in the game. And that kills almost everything. Aside from the uh, Guard Game over there. The Alpha Guard Game. And just use Meave ah. again. And we get two more damage in there. There we go. Alphas, vampires eradicated. We're blazing through these battles though. So Mii's uh, guerrilla army is well suited to beating monsters. If we didn't even pull egg there. Which would have been an enormous... Ooh, there we go. The animated Glusty Warp. I like the Glusty Warp uh, card. If you've uh, been watching my channel, then you know I made a dead bugs deck almost uh, entirely surrounding the Glusty Warp's abilities. But uh, that was cool, that was cool. So let's just check that over here. Can we actually go through any of these shrubs? No. We haven't seen the Yaruga yet either, so no sign of the actual river just yet. Valyrians came to a crossroads. As Meeve and her scouts conferred about the proper that doesn't path look to good. take, a footman of a sudden collapsed upon the muddy ground. His comrades strove to rouse him. Alas, to no avail. Meave called for a medic. One arrived, post haste. He checked for wounds, a heartbeat, all else for which a medic checks. Then he peered down the soldier's throat. In a flash, he was on his feet, his hand over his mouth, backing away. Okay. What's with him? What's wrong? The queen asked, her eyes darting between the medic and his patient. Typhus exanthematicus, your grace. Replied the physician, wiping his hands with a spirit-soaked cloth. Typhus fever. Contagious? Extremely, I fear. Though not yet at this stage. The spots are put in his mouth for now. Tomorrow he'll be blotched all over. It's then the disease turns infectious. I see. What about a cure? Is one known? The medic looked at Meave, shook his head and shrugged. Alas, there was precisely naught he could do. Um, but where medicine fails, magic may at times stand in. 
Without giving it two thoughts, Meave called for Isbel. It's Typhus, I've no doubt. The healer confirmed. I know a spell that could be helpful. Vigil's cleansing, we call it. It takes time to prepare and many ingredients. Rather costly, or... Okay, so is this going to be a decision between gold or... Yeah, of course. I'm wondering if you could actually have lost Isbel by now as well, so you don't have this option. So let's pay Isbel to prepare the spell. Coins no object, said Meave. Get to work at once. Isbel returned from the local herbalist with herbs valuable and rare. Fern blossoms, mandrake root, comfrey seeds and more. She then pulled from her bundle a variety of vessels, funnels, retorts, alembics, carafes. Colored concoctions she then brewed, steam and strange odors rising from them. Hours later, after much effort, she had a few drops of a thick substance in a flask. Isbel whispered an incantation, then gave the remedy to the dying man. His tremors and fever subsided at once, the other symptoms fading within hours. At last, Meave could breathe a deep sigh of relief. There we go. So we saved the soldier and we boosted morale. So that was definitely the best option, because otherwise I feel like we might have even lost somebody just because of the decision. If we needed to put that man down, I don't know how many of our uh, companions would have reacted. Tis a land of monsters. Belongs to them it does. Human folk and nout but guests here. Yeah, I assume so. Beware, me lady. Watch out for leeches especially. They'll slip in your knickers, give them half a chance. Okay. No matter what they think, Nilf guardians won't last long here. Come a time, they'll leave gladly, just like all the others. Okay, so. Leave a good heart, my lady. If you'll not have victuals, please take this. Elf engraving or some such means now to us, but might could help ye. Okay, but we get a map for some elven construction. That is interesting. I'll just check the waypoint as well, and we seems to we seem to be pretty close to elven ruins of some sort. This map is confusing, so we need to head over here. So that's the Tuzla Castle, but I feel like we're skipping over. How do we reach that area? Or do we need to? Oh no, we need to. We can actually pass through the castle, and then we get over here past the monsters. And that route can actually take us back over there. Okay. So that means I probably did most of what we could. Although there's ruins over there as well. So let's check those out first. Because those seem to be blocking us off. So let's go there first. So through the swamp again we get another question mark. Milady, something made of precious metal shimmers on the floor of the swamp. It could be ancient elven treasure. We can attempt to pull it out, but we must be prepared for the worst. Worst. These waters are not the safest. So we lose 10 soldiers, but gain 750 gold and we lose morale, or Barnab have Barnabas devised a contraption that'll fetch the treasure without risk or of harm. So that sounds good. We lose 100 wood, but we get 750 gold, which could actually get us the wood back even. So, there we go. Always take that. And now we have a treasure chest. But is this... Ooh, Reynard Savatai. Is this what we saw on the treasure map then, or not? Uh, let's check maps. Yeah, yeah, okay. That was it, apparently. But yeah, it's been a ah, it's a map from a long time ago. So when there wasn't water over here, and we we just recovered it from the the ground, so to speak. So there seems to be another bit of a camp here. Letter found from Foltus, King of Tamaria, to Angre Ang Angrenian Foreign Defense Corps. The Nilf Guardians have breached our defenses. I am ordering a complete retreat to Tamaria and Bruges or Brugge, because it's. It's a it's it's a city in Belgium actually, Brugge. So it's weird that they use that here, but it's literally the, the, the name of a city in Brugge, better known as Bruges for most English speakers. Via the shortest routes. 
Do not confront Nilf Guardian forces except in cases of direct attack or attempts at disarmament. All should negotiate the withdrawal of garrisons for each town they reach. Okay, so that's... So those are the Northern Realms, Lilies. So, back at the lady we talked to, we got the map from and into this... What is this? So it's a town, but it seems to be... Oh no, it looked like it was abandoned, but let's talk to this merchant. Your Majesty, a merchant named Vanslav of Maribor has requested that you... That you to hear his plea. His horses died of some unknown affliction, leaving his wagon of goods stuck in the swamp. He is prepared to sell his entire stock at a reduced price. He wishes to cut his losses and get out of Angren as soon as possible. What is your response? Uh, yeah, of course. It would be unwise to not make the most his, of his unfortunate, unfortunate predicament. God damn it, there's a few mistakes in those sentences. I accept the offer, so 250 gold for it. 1000 wood, that's a bargain. That is a bargain. So, oh, and he just vanished in a puff of smoke. He's like the characters of Dark Souls. Just recruit them and they go poof. With sports. Giving us a bit of a look at the rest of the map. Is the If the map wants to load. So there's a puzzle over there and a bit of a mini swamp. But let's talk to these. Okay, we can't talk to these fellas. So let's just head straight over there. And there's a corpse here even. From Maximilian Keller, a teacher at Oxenford Academy, to Rain Vigment. In accordance with your request, I made inquiries. I made inquiries into the accuracy of rumors surrounding the so-called Golden Grotto. The results of my research confirm that such a place in fact exists, and it lies to the north of the Elven ruins, which are known simply to the locals as the Arches. It seems the Enshade truly did hide a portion of the riches before abandoning the swamp. However, I urge extreme caution, the Elder Races rarely leave their property unguarded. To the north, but there's a puzzle battle with a hag here and it triggered it really quickly. Swamp Song, Neve pricked up her ears through the hum of mosquitoes and croaking frogs. She heard something unexpected, a singing woman. Puzzled, the queen followed the voice. She soon stood before the entrance to a cave. Footprints visible in the mud, they appeared human if you don't count the three inch claws. Move Meave to the opponent's ranged row. Okay, me move Meave to the opponent's ranged row. But, what do the other units do? Dead wish remove torrential rain from this row and add a straight slinger card to Meave's hand. Destroy a water hack. Every turn on turn end, if there is no torrential rain on the row in front of this unit, move to that row and spawn a Lyrian Arbalest in your hand. So I should probably put her over here. Why are some of those damaged and some not? From this row, an Adestray Slinger card to Meave's hand. That is interesting, I can't even put her on the next row. So I probably should put her over here. Valyria and Rivia, for the north! Oh, so I need to destroy the Water Hag. Right? Give me a time. So that gives me a slinger. Let's put Meave on this row. The morrow shall bring a better day. And we get another Lyrian Arbalest. Then we get the Swift Slinger. And we can either move the water hack one row up or move the water hack one row below. So one row below. There we go. And the turn. And destroy the water hack. Yeah, which means that me will move up and give us another Arbalest. But she probably doesn't want to be next to one of these guys. So if I just use the slinger again and move a water hack one row up, we get that. Never have a score, not there we go. One then if we use the next Arbalest to kill the Water Hack, we get another card in our hand, so let's end the turn. Neve moves up. And then we can destroy another Water Hack. And we're at the range Maria! row. That was actually pretty simple. There we go. Victory. Water Hack down and loot for us. So that means that I'm gonna take a little break in the swamp, because we've killed a lot of monsters by now. 
So uh, without further ado, thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And I'd like to see you all back in Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales next time. Goodbye.